Gonna Whoa. Go, <laughs> and me too. <laughs> oh gosh, what am I gonna do? Daddy! Daddy! Daddy to who? No, my daddy's Would that dead. be a good time for Stop me to put, lay my head in your bosom? Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> Help us, Lord. I wish I had a watermelon. <laughs> your hand sticks. Like, it's like ow, Velcro. Ow, ow. <laughs> it's like Velcro. <laughs> You know, today I want to speak about a topic that is, uh, it's going to, it's eventually going to happen in everybody, if not a lot of the people that watch, it will happen. And it's when we experienced a death of a loved one while married and how that has an impact in, in our marriages. You know, when, uh, when my sister, just a little background, why I thought about this is when my sister died, it was a sudden thing. Uh, and I found myself when I was going through the grieving process, whatever that looked like, my wife had the tendency to want to, to comfort and nurture. That's just her nature to want to do that. And my tendency was push her away, leave me alone. I want to deal with this on my own. And, and it caused distance between us. When my mom died, it seemed like, okay, we're grieving together. We're, we're, we're in this together. But then when my dad died, it was a different dynamic. It, and there was a lot of things in there when my dad passed away that allowed me to start distancing again. I know both of you guys have experienced great loss. You've experienced the loss of both parents and you've experienced the loss of your father. How has that impacted? How, how did that each experience have an impact in your relationship? You know, when um, you get, when you meet the girl as I did, my girl was young or he was still a college student um, <clears throat> in her senior year, and uh, I was still in college, and so we were young. So we had a whole life ahead of us. We had experiences that we were yet to, to share. You know, we had our babies. We, we purchased uh, our homes, um, went through all of those kinds of things that um, are just part of what, you, what, what occurs when you first get married. And, in the first years of your marriage. I think we had like five pregnancies in the first six years of our marriage. And with the miscarriage of one of our babies, mm -hmm. we began to experience um, shared grief mm -hmm. uh, very early, very early and all. And so uh, you do all these basic things and you learn all these basic things from an apartment to a house, you know, to purchasing even cars and furniture and having children and and shared birthdays and holidays you, you start gaining experiences and you have the joys and then you start having the sorrows and the sorrows may come quickly for some or they may come later for others for us um, it was kind of a process where we had more shared joys at first than anything mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. but ultimately you'll you'll get to the point where you start you start experiencing pains together, and, and, and that's when you start discovering things about one another that you really didn't know. We've never gone through these things before, and we, we discovered that relatively um, later in our marriage than earlier, because my father died when I was uh, 51 years old, I think, 50 or 51, and so... Uh, you know, actually, that's not true at all. Let me think. When did Daddy die? How old am I? Yeah, I was 50 or 51. And so that's, you know, uh, uh, years of marriage that Marie and I already had. But that was for me, and I'll let Marie share about her, her experience with her own father. But for me, that was the most cataclysmic thing that she and I ever shared together. Because the loss of a father for a man has a trauma sometimes that is different than when the daughter loses a mother or a father. And I've seen that to be true and may not always be true for everybody, but, but you've, you've seen your mom and your daddy, as well as your sister and your family. You've seen them all go to heaven. You've mm -hmm. seen that. And for us, uh, mm -hmm. it, the loss of my dad, and, and it was an emotional loss to me, caused me to, to experience something I'd never experienced before. My father raised us in a way that I saw him as a superhero. I really, really did. I mean, 
this church has heard stories and all. I don't tell a whole lot of them anymore. Earlier days, I, I did. But um, my dad really was my superhero. I never had anybody else in my life, including my mother, to be honest with you, that mattered to me as much as my father. It, it's just that way with men. My, my dad was my role model, my protector, my provider, my counselor, you know, everything. And so when my father died, I lost. I lost a connection with who I am as a man. One of my friends, John Corson, one time said uh, that a man doesn't become a man until his father dies. Mm -hmm. And I, in theory at that time, said, I, I think I know what you mean. But I would have to say in my, in my life, that seemed to prove true because even though I was already pastoring for many years, a Bible teacher for many years when my father died, uh, I still remember the day that my, my, my mother moved out. We had to sell her a home <clears throat> so that she could live with my sister in New Mexico. And uh, I still remember as we moved the everything out of her house and and uh, the moving truck drove away with the furniture and there goes my little mother in a car driving away. I still remember sitting in the den um, by myself in a den that we on occasion would have my grand the grandkids, my kids, and my dad and my mom on occasion, not often, mm -hmm but on occasion in this den at their house. It's where our church began, mm -hmm. where, where I was sitting, where our first children's ministry was, uh, was held. Marie was the, <laughs> was the children's minister. You know, she was the teacher. And yes. so I'm sitting in this den, and uh, as I'm sitting in the den, I just started crying. And I, I just thought, and I, and I spoke to myself. I know my daddy was in heaven. I know where he's at. I didn't lose him. I really didn't. The emotions are a loss. But the reality is I know where he's at. You don't lose something when you know where it's at. But I, I started speaking out loud. Who am I going to ask advice from? Who's going to help me? Who's going to be there for me? I said, I'm going to miss you, Daddy. And so well, you understand. I can see your eyes. You understand. Um, the loss was unbelievable, John. And, uh, and I'll, I'll go a little further, Mama, if I may. You know, I don't want to take from you. Yeah, no. But um, I, I know that uh, Marie, Marie lost her husband for a while. She lost me. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it, but I went into this kind of like an emotional cocoon. I, I just went into the I have to survive mode. Mm -hmm. See, my father died on a Tuesday. And on a Wednesday, I did a Bible study. On Thursday, I made arrangements for his funeral, on, and I had to purchase a, a, a plot. I had to purchase his casket. I had to figure out what we were going to put on the on the headstone, you know. And I was just like a zombie, if you will, just kind of going through the motions. And Sunday, I did my regular church services, you know. And then the next week, I buried my father on a Wednesday, and then I had. Uh, oh, Saturday, I had a leadership meeting, our Saturday servant seminar. And then Sunday, I did my three services and then an evening service. And then the following Wednesday, I buried my father. And then I performed a wedding at the Wednesday night Bible study for my, for my niece and her fiancé. All of this within a week. So I didn't give myself an opportunity to mourn. I didn't, I didn't know how to. So in our case, I ended up bottling everything, and I ended up, uh, Marie, Marie finally came up to me and said, and we're talking about three weeks or so at least, I haven't shown much emotion. I have been distant, and then, so that's how it affects marriages. I just, I was so, I was so injured inside and trying to survive and all the pressure of trying to minister 
Um, I finally drove. I told Marie, I said, I, I got to go. Not from her, but I needed my, my, my space for a minute. I drove to my father's house, and I pulled in front of it, and I wept for some time. Yeah. And then I came home, and I still hadn't healed. And finally, my son David approached me and said to me, Daddy, he goes, Dad, he calls me Pops. He goes, mm -hmm. he said, I didn't lose just my grandfather. I lost you, too. I love you, Dad. I love you, Daddy. And I looked at him. I said, sure, sure you do. Because at that point, I didn't let anybody love me. I didn't let anybody in my heart. And yet I'm still trying to minister to the church. And I'm losing people because where's your faith? How come you're, you know, you shouldn't mourn, you shouldn't sorrow. Your father's in heaven. You know, mm -hmm. who, who does the healer go to to be healed? Where do you go to be healed, John, when you're the healer in people's eyes, right? I know all of that. The, theologically is incorrect. I know that. But that's what happens is I'm not supposed to have emotion. I'm not supposed to suffer pain. I'm not supposed to. Don't I teach about heaven? And so now the guilt is going on in my, in my own heart. And where's my faith? Why am I so hurt? Well, my dad was... My dad died suddenly, John. It wasn't something we planned on. It wasn't something we, we were looking to. My dad was healthy. I saw him on a Wednesday after he'd had um, um, a stint. You know, I saw him on a Wednesday, and he died the next morning. I, I, I couldn't believe it. And, and it, took me, it took me some time to finally, finally just heal. But in the meantime... Marie had to learn how to live with a grieving man, which she had never had to do. She had never had to. And on one occasion, I'll let Marie share about from a woman's perspective. After I say this, I said to her, after I started to heal, and she was really puzzled with me because she'd never seen me like this. Mm -hmm. She'd never seen me <clears throat> like, I, like I had become. It's just so insulated and so hardened and so... I said, when your daddy goes home to be with Jesus, honey, I said, I'll know how to minister to you. I said, and I said, this is going to work that way. And then almost to the exact day, two years later, in the same room, mm -hmm. I stood there at the bed of my father-in-law, and, and I, I watched him enter into eternity. In the same room, I saw my father-in-law close his eyes and take his last breath. And there were four, room, four beds in this particular room. And I stood in this one bed, looking at the bed my father had expired in. And that had happened almost, mm. what, honey, about two years, two, two years, years difference. Two years. And so <clears throat> those, that's part of what you, you, you said, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, till death do us part. But the for richer or for poorer, the word death, in those, in those vows, those are just words that you're speaking. Poorer, who's going to be poor? Death, you know, that's not going to happen for years. Well, for us, it happened within the first three years when we, when we had our miscarriage. And then the most severe of all was when our parents went to be with Jesus. And... Uh, and like I said, a couple of years later, Marie experienced her own loss. You want to share about that, honey? Um, well, you already mentioned her miscarriage, yes. and that was uh, that was a uh, I that, uh, unexpected, obviously unexpected, and it was it was uh, rough. As I ended up, my sister-in-law, my husband wasn't around, able to be around. He wasn't around at the time. And my sister-in-law drove me to the hospital, I believe. Mm -hmm. Madeline did. And, um, and dropped me off. And, uh, and then they told me, uh, we're going to have to take you in. And you've, you, you've had a miscarriage. That was, that was, that was tough. That was, that was uh, our third baby. That would have been our mm -hmm. third child. And um, 
and uh, um, I just, after they took me in and and uh, did the DNC that they do, um, they put me back, and it, I was in a, a hospital room, and it was the hospital at the hospital uh, room. Uh, I was pretty much I isolated, but there were I could hear the babies because there were babies close by, and uh, it was very. Um, uh, I I I just emotional, emotional, traumatic. very traumatic, and I just. I didn't know what to think, John. It was like I'd never gone through anything like that before. And yet, then you wonder, am I going to have any other children? Will I be able to have more? I, I just, I, yeah. And then to know that my baby, I'll never see my baby. I will see my baby in heaven, praise the Lord. But, uh, but to hold the child, never got to. Not and a living child. A, Marie came out with the baby she, when she miscarried. She came with her hands open like oh, this, I, and that's she said, right. "I just miscarried." I did. She oh, held her baby. I did. I forgot. She held I her forgot. baby. I forgot. That's true. That's I. I did hold my baby. And we put the baby in a bag, and we took it to the hospital. hospital. Yeah. So we yeah. Yes. And then they disposed of it without telling us yes. how they were going to do did. that. Yes. Yes. And of course, then, and it that's when terrible. I had to go into surgery too. At that yeah. moment. But it was it was hard. It was hard. It was hard. Wow, that's that is traumatic. What yeah. about when when uh, when you lost your father? Mm, that was uh, John. That was a uh, really hard. I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest child. I was the oldest. In my family, and uh, my dad loved us. He had an affection, very affectionate to his girls. She was his special, though. Well, I think she we all were. All of them are, of course. But uh, anyway, but he loved um, her. Uh, that was that was a, a real tough, tough thing then. In regards to how it all happened, um, um, and uh, um, I got a phone call on our prayer chain. You know, one of my friends on the prayer chain called me and said, "Marie, you need to know your your dad had a little bit of an accident. It didn't seem like it was it was minor, you know, and um, because they didn't know at the time, they just ex expected and uh, and uh, um, and." Um, you know, they, you know, he's, ta he's they're going to take him to, they took him to the hospital right there um, where your parents, you know, live, not too far from your parents' uh, home. And, um, well, I found out that what had happened is a phone call must have come. My daddy, it was a Friday. It was a Friday, and my sister were, would help in the bookstore, and she happened to be in the bookstore, and Joseph, my son, was there, and um, Pat was doing Friday school with her kids. She homeschooled them here at the church. And um, for some reason, my, grand, my, my, my every Friday, my, my dad would come, and he'd come and see the kids. He would just come, and he loved to walk around the church. Yeah, and so, well, he didn't come this time. And so my sister said, I'm going to call, because my mom usually goes on uh, to the, um, she goes to do her hair on Friday, so she called and and uh, my dad answered, but he didn't sound right. It was it sounded like he was slurring his words, and so Joseph, you know, got a hold of the phone and and then he, they decided that they were going to just go go see what was going on with uh, my dad, and because he heard something like something had fallen. Like something, and it, anyway, uh, turned out my dad had fallen when they got there, and uh, um, and my Joseph uh, was able to attend to my son, my father, and which was a blessing. And um, my my Joseph um, led my dad to the Lord 
right there, he said, Papa, I don't know what's, I don't know what's going to happen right now. I don't know, Pop, you know, but he shared with him, you know, if you can give your life to the Lord right now, if, you know, sh let me share th this with you. And my daddy said, he said, yes, to the Lord. Um, and my sister was standing, was there. She was in a, a obvious, uh, just a, a panic inside and her trying to maintain, you know, there, but, and from there, then they took, he was taken, and um, then I, we got word that my, you know, that that had happened, and so Dave and I went down. My dad lasted a couple, a couple days, a couple days, and, and uh, we were my sisters, and, and my, my sisters are believers, and, um, and I had brothers there also, we might have a few three brothers there. Um, we were around, surrounded our daddy, and uh, my mom was there, and um, um, it was a very sweet time to be with my dad, and, uh, um, but it was tough, John. It was, it was, my dad, like I said, my dad would always bring the little girls, even the, our little ones, our, his, his uh, grandchildren, he'd always he'd get them little stuffed animals or something, and that was my dad. He loved the boys. He, 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 he had he, a special he, love for the girls. <laughs> he, but he, he, he did, he you did. know. And, um, and my, our children did spend a lot of time with them, with both with uh, my daddy. So that was a, a real blessing. But it was, it was, uh, it was really tough. And, and I have to tell you, um, after you know, after we we buried him and everything, it was very hard for me to be in church. I would sit in the back room, kind of, for a, all the for I, I I couldn't go out for some time. It was it was hard. It was hard. The Lord was able to use one another down the road as, as healing, because if we think about some of the conversation that we had in the recent past, uh, how you guys were were made you're, you're made for your marriage we discussed that a few weeks back and the lord we talked about a second later a second before remember we talked about that and knowing in that second that the lord was going to provide all in that quickness of all of that the lord knew that in the time that you guys would go through this that you would be the right one for each other it seems that way to me john you know he i i think you can be a comfort to one another Yes. When you're following the path the Lord has led mm -hmm. you on, the ones that we have over time discovered have greater difficulty are the ones who were not necessarily unprepared emotionally. It's the ones who were unprepared spiritually. You know, they they are the ones I think sometimes that have the most difficult times with with loss. You know, and so for me, uh, I I lived in a, a make made believe. I really did realize that my dad was a human being. I really did. I mean, I'm not, I'm not pretending that I really thought he was a superhero, but my my father had a purpose in life, and that was my mother. Mm -hmm. You know, and so dad, dad was a heroic figure in many ways. One of them was that he, at the age of 65, retired with a very small pension, Social Security, to take care of a woman who was ill, who had been ill, John, since she was 24. And so Daddy was 74 years old when he died, and he'd been taking care of her since he was um, about 28, you know? So this is a heroic figure to me because Mama, in her illness, could be a very difficult woman. That, that's understandable. And, but dad was very heroic. So when, when he, was, he had his heart attack and my mom called and said, son, we're in the hospital. Uh, can, you, can you come? I said, of course, I'll be right there. Now, honest to goodness, I, Marie and I, you know, I said, daddy's in the hospital, honey, we're going to go. We, you know, I'll go. And mama said, yes. Marie said, I'll go. Yeah, let's go. Oh, no. But I honestly looked at it like I was going to visit dad and he's going to get out, right? So that's, I've told the story before, but when I went to the hospital here in Chino, um, 
mama walks up to me and says to me, dad had a heart attack. They had to come in the hospital. Uh, the ambulance had to come to bring him to the hospital. She's filling me in. And she says, you know what he did before they got here? And I said, uh, no, mama, what? She said, he prayed. Well, daddy was a believer. You know, I, I had brought my father to faith in Christ uh, when he was uh, 44 years old. And so he was a believer. And so I said, okay, well, of course. You know, daddy was a member of our church. He, our, our church started basically in home Bible studies at his house. I mean, why wouldn't he pray is what I immediately thought. But she said, do you know what he prayed? And I said, no, mama, what? He said, Father, take care of my wife. Mm -hmm. That was my dad's last prayer that I know of. Father, take care of my wife. That was my dad. And yeah, so I, 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 did not, I did not expect him to die. I didn't. And so when he did, I was devastated. I was, I was unable to grasp it. But by the time Marie's daddy mm -hmm. had his episode that led to his home going, I, I was prepared for her sake, mm -hmm. you know, yes, for, for Marie's you. sake, you. you know, to be there to walk with her in, yes. in, in her. Women and men, I think, grieve differently. We have different relationships with our parents, you know, her daddy had a different relationship than I had with my father, mm -hmm. you know? And so I couldn't identify those, those daughter sorrows mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. joys. I, yes. I couldn't, you know, she presented her father with his first grandbaby and, yes. and, and, and all those wonderful things. My, I remember s sitting out in the front yard, my father-in-law used to like to sit out and watch his grandchildren play yes. and uh, it would be Christmas. And, um, you know, I loved my father-in-law a lot, and he is a good man. And so I remember walking out where he was, uh, you know, the family, the Lopez families together. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, I st sat outside in the front yard, sat next to my father-in-law, and I looked at him, you know, and he loved me. And I, I know he did, you know, so that made me feel part of the family. And so he, I looked at him and I said, I said, uh, May I ask you a question? And he says, okay. I said, um, the way that I have provided for your, your daughter, I said, are you pleased with that? Are you pleased with how I have taken care of her? And I'll never forget him looking at me. David, all I ever wanted was her to be happy. He said, that's all I've ever wanted. And if she's happy, I'm pleased. And I said, I've tried to make her happy. He says that I'm pleased. And that was the most personal conversation he and I had. Uh, and then the day that he died, as, as Marie said, I was there at the foot of yes. the bed, you know, with my brothers-in-law. Yes. And, and, and Kurt was there, I believe, yes, Mama? Yes, yes, and I, I think my brothers, yeah. Your brothers, and, and, uh, you know, uh, Reuben Matthew. and Matthew and, yeah, all of and them. Kurt, the family. Mm -hmm. All of us, yeah. Were there at the foot of the bed, and I think your Mama and you had um, walked out. You had to take your Mama out. I think at one point, but yeah. when she was there, too, with and, me. And yeah, at that her. point, I looked at my father-in-law, and my brothers-in-law were standing there. And I love my brothers-in-law, like my brothers. I'm kind of like the older brother, you know, to these men in some ways. And so and you prayed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I prayed, but I, I took his his foot. You know, he used to like his head rubbed yes. and his feet rubbed. <laughs> yes. And and I reached down and I touched his foot, you know, because I was at that that part. I was the foot of the bed. And uh, and I said, I want to tell you something. He was in a coma, you know, and I didn't know whether he was aware or not, but I said, I want you to, I want to tell you something, Pop. I said, thank you for how you raised your daughter. Thank you. Thank you. And I love you. And my son, my brothers-in-law were there watching me. 
as I touched his foot. And I said, because I, I never told him. And all the years Marie and I were together, from the day he met me with his wild afro when I was 24 <laughs> years old <laughs> to, to that moment. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, I've never told you, but I want you to know I love you. I love you. And thank you for how you raised your daughter. And uh, I, I took that to heart. So the next Christmas or one after that, re after, recent after that, I gave my mother-in-law a card for Christmas. In it, I said, I've never told you how much I love you. I, I, I didn't tell my father-in-law, well, he could hear it. So I want you to hear it mm -hmm. while you still can. Mm -hmm. I love you. You know, so those are the things that um, Marie and I shared, the things that, that changed in, in us and the grief that we learned to um, deal with. Um, I am very grateful for the support, the spiritual support that my girl was able to bring to me. And, and I tried to provide that for her. Oh, thank God. The hope, yeah. the hope that we have in Christ. That's what, that's what pushed us over. And so yes. a few years later, um, my mom died, and it was a different experience entirely when Mama died mm -hmm. than it was when my dad died. And Sandy McIntosh, one day, you know, after Mama died, looked at me and said something that I had thought but never said. She looked at me, and she said, and the way she said it, she's so dear, I love Sandy very mm -hmm. much. She said, you're an orphan like that. And, I, and you know the feeling. Mm -hmm. You're an orphan. And I said, I, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. You know, yeah. yeah. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you orphans. I will come to you. Thank you know, you. so we're really not orphans. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I said, in a practical way, I am, you know. But that that's what we've gone through in, in that pain. Um, and we, we comforted each other. We were there for one another. Right. If Marie... Marie is very quiet and very she she closes very much her emotions. Me, I wear them on my sleeve normally. <laughs> you know, you're gonna know if I'm upset or if I'm happy. You'll know, because I don't hide my emotions that well, especially to my wife. You know, she knows me, but I became a mystery to her because I had never gone through That's anything, right. and like this, and she she was living with a different man. Than she had known all those years. Yes, she was living right. with a different man, and she didn't know how to relate, and she was helpless, because the only help that I could get eventually, it really came from the Lord. It so really did. Right. God, God woke me up through the words my little. He was young at that time through my baby, my son Dave, when he told me I lost my grandfather and my dad, mm -hmm. and and I actually thought about that and though I couldn't receive what he was saying when he said it I did later and and that's what turned my heart to realize that I had a I had absented myself from my own family and my grief um, Marie did the same kind of thing but in a more subtle way because mm -hmm. she's more like her dad mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. more like her dad. She mm -hmm. closes her emotions up, and you won't know what's going on unless she wants you to know. But I, I know my girl. I know how she is, and, mm -hmm. and I knew that I had to give her space to deal with this the way she deals with how she deals with her pain. I had to, and that's what I had learned because um, she needed to give me some room to let God speak to m my broken heart. And so I had learned that, and so I thought, <clears throat> no, I'm here. She knows I'm here. She'll yes. take advantage of that. She knows. Yes. I don't have to push myself on her. She'll talk. And she, yes. she did when yes. she felt like it. She'd share. Mm -hmm. But to this day, she, we, we really don't talk about these things. The only time we ever talk about them is when we see our grandchildren and we tear up with one another saying, mm -hmm. our dads never met them. Yes. And you know that feeling. Never our did. dads never, our dads yes. didn't have. They met. He met. He met his grandchildren, but 
-hmm. He never met his great grandchildren. That's right. And so we'll to this day will say, Oh, he would love that one there. I mean, yes. he would. Oh, that little stinker. Your dad would have loved that one, and we'll yes, do that. Yes, Because our, so our grandbabies are stinkers, you know. And <laughs> Darling. Stinkers. Yeah, they're, they're, they're Rosaleses, you know. <laughs> yeah. How did you guys deal with the times? I often think about when I first got hired here, the first thing I wanted to do was call my dad, call my parents and let my dad, you know, because of the little bit of the history that we have, like, Dad, I'm going to, work for Pastor David, you know, and, and you pick up the phone and, and I went through that for a while and it was difficult to navigate through that, you know, and, but with that, I think about families who may not have lost a loved one in a sense by death, but have lost a loved one maybe by the way of prodigal. And I think about them as well, how even in that type of loss, the grief that goes on and, uh, and the dangers that can happen when there is a polarization uh, and distancing because there's really no book that tells us, okay, when you, your child has gone out there, we lost a dad or a mom or a child, doesn't really explain the dynamic that goes on, you know? And, and, uh, and so I wanted to ask, um, what can be the, the dangers of that distancing from one another when there is a loss? You know, the first thing God ever says is not good is that the man should be alone. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the dangers of grieving alone over a prolonged period is your life becomes unbalanced and disconnected. And so I, I think that, I think it's important to, to be aware of that at all times. Um, when 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 we when I lost, um, you know that earth relationship with my dad, uh, there were some people who who wanted to be a comfort to me, and said the wrong kinds of things, yeah. you know. And God bless them; they they don't intend to mm -hmm. to be um, hurtful or they just are. They're doing their best, and so you give them grace, you know. So. We had a few, um, you'll see your father in heaven, you know, and, yes. and e eventually you, you begin asking, have you ever, is your daddy still alive? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I think it's always wise to, to, to be as wise as Job's comforters when they first sat with him and mm -hmm. in silence said nothing so many days. Mm -hmm. because you weep with those who weep. Mm -hmm. And I never needed to be given Bible studies by people I'd taught. You know, I, I needed just to be allowed to grieve, which on my, in my experience, um, there were quite a number who, who would not allow for that. Um, so what did we learn? We, we learned that there's a proper time to speak and there are proper words to speak and uh, give people some room, make yourself available, but do so in a way that isn't threatening. Allow them if they have to cry for a month to cry, uh, encourage them when given opportunity, be a shoulder mm -hmm. if you need to be. You know, Randy Walls and Jeanette Walls are, are two of our dearest friends. Yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Randy walked with me through the valley. Randy went with us to purchase. Well, he actually mm -hmm. was in the room with us, uh, you know, almost from the onset. You know, he, uh, he went with me when I, I purchased my dad's casket, when I purchased the, the, the headstone. Um, he walked with me through the entire valley. He never Christine. left my side. Jay was the same way. Jeanette was the same way. Right. And uh, yes. they, 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 suffered. they suffered along with me when I stopped talking. With them, it was, it was they, they were really, really hurt in some ways. I don't want to put words into their mouths, but, but they would tell you that, that they lost me. They will tell you that that they didn't know where I went because they were not used to me that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
because he was there and then suddenly I'm not. You know, when when Marie, when Marie's father went home to be with the Lord, she handled it differently. Marie, Marie's got a strength about her that uh, is very much to be admired. And she she went she went through her her loss in a different way than I went through mine, but she never absented herself from us. She was always there. She was always present, but she just had her private grief. And I and I I felt it wise to let her grieve. Everybody grieves differently. I wanted her to grieve in a way that would bring healing. That's because so I'm very much everybody knows this who knows us. I'm very much a strength to my wife. Yes, She's a strength, of course, to me, but I'm a very much a strength to her, and she really does rely on me. Yes. And sometimes I have to just be quiet because she doesn't need my words. She just needs me, mm -hmm. you know, and I had, I had to practice that, and so I learned that. So whatever, whatever the, the couple is going through together, they need to receive one another. They need to, like Paul said in Romans, you need to receive one another. You need to accept one another, not try and change them, not say, you've got to talk right now. You're, mm -hmm. No, you can't do that, you know, the way I do it. And I, I do that. Can you imagine the different conversations over the years, John, that, that I've had, you know, with people where I, I, I'm a listener. You know, people know me as a talker because pastors talk. But I'm I'm really a listener. I'm much more of a listener, and people in the pul in the pews know. I, I I'll listen, and if you've got something you need to share, that's what I listen. I listen, and unless asked, I I don't really speak that much. I just mm. because I think that sometimes people just need to say, "This is how I feel. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going through," and I'm not going to say, "Oh, snap out of it," <laughs> right. you know. The yeah. joy of the Lord is your strength, right. you know. Right. You know, Don McClure said something, and I'll paraphrase him. He says, I believe that Christians grieve deeper because Christians love deeper. Mm -hmm. I think there's truth to that. Mm -hmm. uh, we grieve deeper because we love deeper. And, um, and for my dad, uh, there was a huge, mm. huge, huge void. Mm -hmm in my life when daddy went home. Absolutely. Yeah, very, very huge. Yeah. And with mama, with Marie, you know, her daddy. Yes. Very special relationship. Yes. yes. And so it was It was hard. It huh? was hard. It was hard. There were times we just would just want to just sit next to each other. Sometimes that's just the best it's, way. It's sometimes, to... yeah. You don't need to say anything. You just sit. I think people don't know how to respond, so they feel that they have to fill that time with words. They don't mean harm. I, I remember how many times I was offended, but I didn't look beyond. They never experienced anything like this. They don't know what to say. And they think sometimes by just feeling that silence, they say something, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've been trying to convince my wife recently. I've told her I've been grieving the loss of my parents and my sister. And so uh, I need to get new golf clubs, but she's not <laughs> She's not going for it. You know, it's like, honey, I'm grieving. I need to get clubs. No, yeah. <laughs> She's not falling for it. No. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you guys, that's uh, just about our time. Thank you so much for being able to share. Uh, I mean, even as we share, it's still difficult. And it could be three years ago. It can be 15 years ago. It can be, and it's still difficult. And uh, But to be able to, to reflect back and see how the Lord led you both through the difficult times and used you guys both to, to come together in such, I mean, as you mentioned, Pastor and Marie, Probably some of the most difficult times in our lives going through something like that you know and so uh, so thank you for being transparent is there anything you'd like to say to our church before we close i miss some of you who are staying home um <laughs> but then again i know that you need to uh, we're looking forward to church services um this sunday we celebrate which our service isn't going to be a celebration of I do hope that we'll have that, God willing, next year on yes. our 40th. But um, the 26th represents our 39th anniversary for the church to meet on Sunday mornings. And so mm -hmm. just to be here, 
on that that day, John. See, you were six years old or so <laughs> when I used to teach at your house. And um, to see you, after all these years, to be able to be part of this ministry and to be able to celebrate uh, with us something that in some ways goes way back in your distant past, uh, it's going to be a joy. And so for us, um, I, I would hope that those who who would like to be with us and haven't yet come, uh, that they would come. We, we do take every precaution uh, for the CDC regulations and everything. This place is, is cleaner than it's ever been, and thank God that it is. And it, it is a safe location, and um, I'd love to have my church with me this, this week. And so just want to say to our church, and I say this for Marie and me, both of us, you know, John, um, for us to live is Christ, you know, but our joy has been to be able to communicate um, the love of God to people. And this Sunday I'll be teaching out of 2 Corinthians 11, and I will be closing with Paul's statement that after all that he's gone through, and he, he lists quite a number of things about the da dangers, travels, the perils, you know, the persecutions. He, he goes through a litany of things that he's endured and spoken of the pressure that he carries. He, his last and most important pressure is his daily concern that comes upon him for the church. And so, you know, people don't know our, our private journey. They, they don't know the sacrifices, and I'm not making big deal out of them, Paul didn't want to make a deal out of his. He just said, I feel obligated to share. But my wife has given up an awful lot to have a husband who's a pastor. And, and I have given up an awful lot of life to care for this church. I have. My children gave up their father uh, because I, I cared for other people in a, in a way that the average person doesn't. And so I understand some of what Paul's saying when he says, after all these things that I've gone through, he said, my daily concern for the church. You know, I understand that as a pastor would. And so I have a daily concern for the sheep here. I may not be able to come and see every person. I can't have coffee with everyone. I can't sit down and personally counsel every couple or even spend much time with every person. That doesn't happen. How can it? We we normally have so many people, but that doesn't mean that our hearts aren't with the people here. It doesn't mean that, that we don't carry uh, in our hearts concerns for them. And so uh, that's just the life of a pastor. And I have never looked at this church as a stepping stone for me to be well known in a community or to get some personal aggrandizement from service. I've looked at them as being the most important people in my life outside of my blood relatives. And so I miss my church, you know, I, I do. Just to see people out there, even though I can't, I can't really spend time with them doesn't mean that I don't see them and I'm not grateful for them. So I miss my church, we, yes, we both do. We, do. we miss our people very much and we love them, but we, we understand, we do. Some cannot come. Some are concerned with their health. And you know what? We are too. But I look forward to being able to celebrate this Sunday. Um, 39 years. Some, some men have not remained married to their wives for 39 years. But I've been married to our ministry faithfully for 39 years. And um, it's my greatest love um, outside of my Jesus and my wife and my babies. And so I look forward to Sunday. And I know our church family is so thankful that we've had you to shepherd our church to celebrate 39 years. Wow. I mean, that's amazing. Well, so you're I'm... happy. I don't know about the other ones, John, because <laughs> I pay you. <laughs> you pay me to say that. Yeah, that's right. And church, come out and join us. The Second Corinthians study is, is amazing. Even the Wednesday night service here, you've been in John 18 these last, uh, last week and tonight looking at Peter and you guys just have to come check it out. So come join us. 
God bless you, church. God bless you. Love you.